I think the most interesting thing happening right now is Nikki Haley appears to be coalescing support as the non-Trump alternative. And uh, it really is one of those things where it's like, boy, you want to break late in these contests. And that's what she's doing. Um, she, there's just a report out today that the Koch brothers and their influential network is backing Nikki Haley. It's the first time they've ever backed uh, a GOP primary contestant <clears throat> and they've chosen her. They say the election's too important to sit this one out. They've already been running ads that are anti-Trump in various swing states, just trying to get the message out. It can't be him. I'll give you a sample of some of that. Here's just a bit, SOT 21. Ask yourself, is it worth the risk? America is struggling because of Joe Biden's policies. But with Donald Trump, Republicans lost the House, lost the White House and the Senate. And we've lost our chance to capitalize on Biden's devastating record. If Donald Trump is the GOP nominee, we could lose everything. The House, the Senate, the White House. It's time to look to a new leader, unless we're willing to risk it all. But they didn't say who that new leader was. <laughs> and the decision is sort of like, well, we'll see. Hasn't worked out so well for people looking for a non-Trump alternative because the field remains divided. This is how he got the nomination in 1516. So now the Koch brothers, in addition to many others, uh, there's Stan Druckenmiller, a billionaire who was mentioned, I think, in a New York Times report yesterday. A couple of others who are publicly saying it's Haley for them. They're getting behind her. She's the one. So... Do we think this will matter in in the big contest? What do you think, guys? I think it's a test case of uh, how much money matters in GOP primary politics. Um, it, I think it matters in the sense that you can spend a lot of money in Iowa in particular and move the needle. Most every year that someone has gone all in on Iowa and um, punched above their weight. They usually do that at the uh, expense of New Hampshire and then it becomes a bit of a problem. So Haley can use that, um, the Koch brother, because David Koch uh, left us a few years ago, um, but the Koch network, which is more important than any of that, um, can give her some money to create that separation. But I think there's a, I mean, that ad uh, seemed to me directionally correct. It is, in many ways, the best argument to make to Republican Trump voters Um not necessarily that Trump is a crazy erratic person, which is something that I might say as a non-Republican, but that he's going to lose uh, or that he's the only one who threatens to lose running against this very, very old man who's incredibly vulnerable to the extent that RFK Jr. is pulling at 15 and 20 percent in the three-way matchup. My God. Um, so that is the correct thing. The question just is, uh, can you, can they uh, have Nikki Haley elbow out Ron DeSantis ahead of time and convince, you know, the Chris Christie's the world that uh, whatever he's doing is not working. Um, and I, you know, that that gap is just too large. It's hard to imagine it having a huge impact. Uh, she just clearly has performed the best uh, of all of the non-Trumps in this in this uh, race so far. Vivek had his first little bump and then he's annoyed everybody ever since. Yes. <laughs> and uh, and she's just re run really well. And I say that as someone yeah. disagrees with her about a bunch of stuff, but she has run a great campaign so far. So maybe she'll be, you know, in a head-to-head -head race between her and Trump, that will never happen, uh, probably, sadly. Um, she would have a puncher's chance um, in a divided field. It's going to be really hard. You know, it's I funny mean, because we talk about her, guys. Uh, we talk about her surge, and she is surging, and she's, almost giving Ron DeSantis a run for his money. Not almost, she is in Iowa mm -hmm. now. Yeah. And she looks favored to win in New Hampshire and she's a South Carolina hometowner. So, but win and, you know, possible win in New Hampshire, possible, we mean second. <laughs> we mean yeah. second. You know, Trump is 50 points ahead, 30 points ahead. Take your pick. Scores of points ahead of everyone who's running second in any of these states. So, yeah, I mean, this is the, the question is, the, the real question as I see it, and you tell me, Moynihan, is whether this can kill DeSantis. Can this kill DeSantis? Because if they want Nikki, they got to get rid of him. Yeah, I mean, DeSantis, who I think, um, I thought was a very strong candidate. I mean, he's uh, particularly strong in, in Florida when you come to local governance. I think he's done a, a good job, despite disagreeing with him on some things. I mean, his response to, to crisis there and his response to COVID 
is fantastic. But I mean, I think people have forgotten about COVID. If COVID had a real surge again, um, mm. it would be the best thing that ever happened to Ron DeSantis because he could mm -hmm. he could actually run on that, which is something that um, I appreciate. Nikki Haley, as you said, look, I, I mean, it's all in some ways a waste of breath because she is the best person to come in second in the Koch brother or the Koch network, which is fairly interesting, by the way, that they're supporting her shows you how much they loathe Donald Trump because she's mm -hmm. essentially a neoconservative and they're a bunch of libertarians and right. they're not necessarily fans of of Nikki Haley's uh, type policy, but they see her obviously as as the best person to make a run at Trump, which is probably true. And again, Matt Matt is correct. I mean, it, on a head to head matchup, yeah, I think that'd be very very interesting. But you know, twenty thirty points behind, you know, and he's not going to show up at the debates. I mean, it's you're you're running for second place. It doesn't make a difference to, at but all. But if you look, but, uh, I was actually just looking at these numbers, just looking at these numbers the other yeah. day uh, on these early state polls. And we're still in the place where even though Trump is crushing all the rest, if you add up the numbers of the rest, it's split 50-50. It's yeah, split. Mm -hmm. That's true. The Republican Party mm -hmm, yeah. is split. And so it still is true that if the party coalesces, that other 50% coalesces behind one candidate, Trump would be vulnerable, Camille. I mean, it it would not necessarily be a runaway. Yeah, and it's it's not impossible to imagine, um, although folks would have to exit the race pretty quickly for it to actually make a difference, I think. Um, and I don't know um, if there are already conversations happening along those lines, but I don't think Vivek or Ron are likely to drop out of the race um, mm -hmm. on their own. Um, I think Vivek kind of knows what his pro prospects are, uh, despite what he said publicly. My suspicion is that he would very happily accept a VP nod from Donald Trump and run on that or ticket. Or any with him. cabinet nod. nod. <laughs> or perhaps any, <laughs> perhaps any cabinet nod. I, I do think that he and um, uh, uh, Nikki Haley actually hate each other. Like it seems genuine. Uh, yeah. So it's very hard to imagine them getting together on the same ticket. Uh, but it, but it is very interesting. I think Moynihan highlights the right thing with respect to the Kochs actually having pretty severe and profound disagreements with Nikki on policy and still being willing to make that particular choice. Um, and to what Matt was saying earlier, it's not just the test of what matters with respect to money. I mean, the, the Koch network has tremendous re resources with respect to just their campaign operation and their ground game. They have a lot of great intelligence tools that they can bring to bear. It'll be an interesting test to see if those things matter at all anymore. Um, so can can actually latching all of that on to Nikki's campaign, which has been pretty good so far, but it's just a couple of weeks ago, I think, that she wanted to ban all anonymous uh, social media posting. Yeah, um, that was not a not a great call on her part. Um, so it, it is all very interesting to watch play out, if not a little bit depressing, um, but mm. certainly makes things interesting. Negative dings on credit reports happen to all sorts of people from all socioeconomic backgrounds. Understanding the credit landscape can be extremely difficult, very difficult and unpleasant. Spending the time to dispute and repair these so-called dings can be a full-time job too. Good luck to you if you already have one of those or kids or anything else going on. For starters, you're going to have to deal with three, the three separate credit bureaus, and that in and of itself is a massive headache. It's also a common misconception that people with poor credit scores are just those who simply don't pay their bills. These can be very hardworking people who are negatively affected by divorce, identity theft, medical debt, student loans. I've been there, that happened to me, uh, and don't have the time or are too overwhelmed to fix it. But if you do not address negative credit items, they can haunt you for years to come and when it counts the most, like when you're trying to get a mortgage at a competitive rate. Well, the good news is that our sponsor, Lexington Law wants to help you. Go to lexingtonlaw.com. Start today with a free consultation and review and tell them Megan sent you at lexingtonlaw.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.